Uh, good afternoon. Good to be out there today. I uh, thought we had a good workout. I um, thought, uh, thought the players did a good job flying around. Questions? Josh Hicks, uh, what are you doing with him this week? Josh Hicks is going gonna, is gonna to help us simulate Amir Abdullah. You know, while he continues to learn the, uh, the safety position, we've got to put somebody back there. Uh, obviously, that is a, can give us the right kind of look and the right kind of speed, and, and yeah, I think very highly of Josh's ability at tailback. So he, he's, a, he's a, a good person to do that. And then Isaiah Wharton is going to be their quarterback. You know, we just felt like we needed a quarterback back there who's a little bit more of a threat as a runner. Um, and Isaiah throws it fine, but, but we needed somebody who's a little bit more of a threat as a runner. And when we get the third and third and long game plan, we'll uh, probably use a different quarterback. Why Wharton and not Verbitsky, since he did the running quarterback thing the last time? Well, Verbitsky really is, is it was the option, and it's it's a different system. You know, these guys are in the gun, and the run plays are a little bit different, and the angles are a little bit different. So we just we just felt like Isaiah would be the best guy for the job. Does he have a lot of uh, quarterback experience or anything? Minimal. Minimal, but the look we're looking for is more about the quarterback as a runner. And then, again, we'll deal with the passing part of it because their quarterback is an effective passer and a, and a much improved passer from last year. But we'll deal with that more as the week goes on. When you see their quarterback's completion percentage, is that a result that they take a lot of shots downfield or it's just a little lower than you, know, you might expect? They take shots down the field, but they, they throw a fair amount of bubbles and screens and, and passes like that as well. And I think what you probably will find is – as they get more comfortable with him in their system, they'll give him more and more. You know, not that dissimilar to what we saw last week. You know, the more the more comfortable a guy is in your system, the more he can do, and the more stress you can put on a defense. They have two receivers with almost the same exact stats, same catches, same yards, same touchdowns. Do they have a number one receiver? I don't know if you have a corner you like to put up on number one receivers, or it's generally not the way we play. Um, but they, they do have a, a very talented group of receivers, and then they got a freshman number fifteen who's a, a dynamic punt returner and, and a guy who's starting to come on uh, in the passing game. So they, they've, got some, they've got some legitimate weapons back there. So you'll just keep your corners on like their side of the field? Oh, well, we don't want to divulge the whole game plan here <laughs> on Tuesday, but uh, <laughs> they do have our film, and, and generally that's what we do. Your, um, their offensive line averaging, I think, 305 across the board. Um, is it more and more, to, more physically imposing? What do we players? average? I think about 300. All right. So I mean five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. I think, you know, I think that's life in the Big Ten. I think, I think as you look at the offensive lines in this conference, that's what you're going to see. It's, a, it's not something we're, we're, we're not used to, look, to seeing or looking at. You know, there's, there have been some big offensive lines that we've played against over the years. Um, but the, the more important thing is that they've got a talented offensive line, and I think they're very well coached, and, and they do what they do very well. And then you know, Amir Abdul is a spectacular player. But he can't do it by himself. You know, there's a lot of guys out there blocking in front of him that are doing a good job as well. And they play uh, more than five, right? Correct, they do. Kyle, obviously the flood or the flood. The, the Appreciate the shout out. The, <laughs> sp <laughs> the spread has many origins, but did you think the the rich Rodriguez offenses you saw in the mid 2000s like kind of helped kick start the spread wave? Or oh, I would say that that Coach Rodriguez's success certainly plays a part in it because people get to see that on a national level and, and a lot of times it trickles down from college at the, into the high school level. Uh, you know, what I see from Nebraska resembles a lot more of Nevada okay. and the pistol than it does what Coach Rodriguez did. You know, what Coach Rodriguez did was, was more with one or two backs in the backfield um, on the same level as the quarterback. And, um, you know, what you're seeing from, from these guys is a little bit of that, but you're also seeing a fair amount of pistol and some pistol run game. So. Uh, you know, we uh, we had a chance to visit out there in Nevada a couple of years ago, and the coaches they were very uh, very good to us in terms of sharing information. So I would tell you from what I've seen from Nevada and what I've seen from Nebraska, there's probably more influence there. Was that when Chris Alt was their offensive coordinator? Yeah, correct. Chris Alt was the head coach. Oh, I'm sorry, the yeah. head coach. I don't think he was the offensive coordinator by title, but it's his offense. Right. Okay. Didn't you play someone who did a lot of pistol last year? Hmm. I feel like I. I'd have to go back and look. You know. Last week seems like a year ago, so <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready to speak on that. Is your AD allowed in practice, or are you concerned that she's going to divulge like the secrets? The reference to being a Nebraska alum? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think uh, I think her loyalties are, are, are well dug in here. <laughs> Kyle, with playing the two backs that you're playing, how do you measure success in the run game? Is it a yards per carry metric that you want to reach, or is it a total between them? or? I don't know that I would put a number on it. Ultimately, we're, we'll be measured on the scoreboard. You know, we want to win the game. You know, that's we want to be one and zero on Saturday. That's the the ultimate measure of success. And we, 
I think the other thing we, that we're going to need to do to be 1-0 is we're going to have to minimize the big plays. You know, I, I, if we can minimize the big plays, then what happens to the other team? Then you test their patience and how willing are they to continue to run it and run it and run it. But um, if you give up big plays in the running game, it's going to be it's going to be hard to uh, to be one and zero. So I meant from your own from your own running game. Oh, from our running yeah. game. I think I meant defending theirs. Oh, we we need to be effective running the football. Uh, again, I'm not, we don't we don't have a, a goal board with a number on it or anything like that. You know, we need to be a, effective running the football, and I would tell you we need to be effective early in the game running the football. Did you have any temptation? I know you said you're going to alternate. You have any temptation to stick with Desmond after you had that that good drive? No, I think both guys are doing a good job, and uh, and we'll continue to do it the way we've done it. Did, did what Robert Martin showed you push him closer to working into that rotation? Absolutely did. It absolutely did. I, I have a very high opinion of Robert Martin, and the most important thing he did was hold on to the football and protect the football. And I thought he did that. It's not just run. Sometimes a guy can run with the football, and he's not. He's not carrying it the way you want and he's exposing it and it doesn't get exposed because the ball didn't but that was not the case. I thought Robert did a nice job of securing the football as he ran. So yeah, I would say yes. Thanks. Thank you.